How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Steve. Thank uh, you. I'm going to start with, I always, you're, you're obviously uh, fantastic in these movies. Uh, I'm just going to say I really enjoy uh, your work in these things, and uh, you're making me look away from the screen at least a few times. <laughs> well, I don't know. Keep your eyes riveted to it, you know? Have you ever pulled Fede and Roto aside and been like, you know, you guys come up with some pretty messed up stuff, right? <laughs> well, I, <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, have, I have said to uh, Fede at one point, I said, what's going on in your mind? I mean, you sick son of a gun. Yeah, but uh, but I've I, I've gotten tuned into it, you know. They've taken me along with them. I've gotten uh, as I've gotten as depraved as they are. <laughs> um, when you made the first movie, uh, obviously there was no way of predicting it was going to be this huge hit. What was your like optimistic goal when making the first film in terms of box office and how it would be received? Well, I I, I mean I can honestly say I had no box office expectations at all. I don't, uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't really think in, in those terms. I don't, cause I don't know enough about it. You hope for success. I, I mean, I'll say, God, I hope it's a hit, you know, uh, for sure. Uh, I think that when it played at South by Southwest, um, I think that was an indication that, that it was going to be good, that it was, uh, there was buzz on it. And then, and then, and I saw the picture and I thought, this is a good picture. My aspirations from the beginning were uh, make a really good movie, make it and, and play, do your job the best you can, play your character as honestly and as, um, you know, as, 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 as authentically uh, as you possibly can. And the rest will take care of itself. That was my, such was my thinking. I love learning about the behind the scenes of making of movies. Um, what do you think might surprise people to learn about the making of Don't Breathe 2 or even the first one? I'm not sure what would surprise them. I mean, it's a painstaking process. It is. There's a certain amount of uh, improvisation uh, that 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 goes on. Not everything is completely plotted out um, that the best laid plans of uh, directors can be um, can kind of go out the window when when they say action and uh, you know stuff just you know the fur starts flying as it, as it were. Uh, but I maybe they'd be surprised at how um, just how professional and grown up um, Madeline Grace was uh, during this. I mean she and also I guess I would say that you know a film set we're making this horrific film. You know, uh, the, the world of this film is dark and everything. Actually, when you're making the movie, it's all, everything is very, very, you know, sedate and quiet and, and normal when, when the cameras are, are not rolling, I, I'd say, you know. But I don't know that you can really surprise people anymore. There's been so much behind the scenes and every, a lot of the magic of making films has been, uh, I think has been kind of exposed in a way, which is not to say that people still don't love the movies because they do. I think you're totally true that the magic of the behind the scenes is all out there. But I found that almost on every production or every movie that I talk to people about, there's always something that is unusual to that one production or something that people would just not expect. You know, well, I, you know, I guess on this one, I would say is that, you know, we although, of course, this takes place in Detroit and and. And for both movies, there is a real location in Detroit, which where we've gone to do exterior work. Both of these houses bo were built, you know, one in Budapest, Hungary, and one in um, in Serbia, in uh, Belgrade. And so, you know, here we are making a film that's taking place in the, you know, the the outskirts of uh, uh, the no man's land of Detroit. Actually, where you know <laughs> we're in Eastern Europe for both of them. Yeah, yeah I, that definitely people, I think, are always amazed about these films get put together or you'll shoot something in one sequence in South Africa and the other sequence was in Los Angeles. That's been the history of the movies, you know, forever. It's always been. I mean, I always love hearing, you know, Sergio Leone, when he was finishing Once Upon a Time in America, he had to import red dirt from Spain to Hollywood to kind of match. It's like, really? Cool. <laughs> anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do you enjoy playing someone that it has such a broken moral compass? Yeah, I do. I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy exploring 
uh, that. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it gives you a lot to kind of work with as you try to take the, you know, you look down at the jagged pieces of your life and you try to, try to fit them together in some way, or you don't do that and you try to carry on as a broken mechanism, it seems to me. And uh, that, that's, that's fascinating stuff to do as an actor. It's not, the mo it's not the only fascinating thing or possibly even the most fascinating thing, but it's pretty damn fascinating. Uh, Fede told me that when you step on set, uh, you sort of disappear and your character emerges until you leave set. Is that pretty much how you operate on, on all the things you've done or is it only on particular projects? It's, um, it's more so on some projects than on other, but essentially it, it's, it's a much simpler way to operate, you know, uh, than it is. I, I kind of stick to my, it's easier or it's simpler on a project like this because he's such an isolated character that it's really easy for me just to retreat into my own self, you know? Uh, there are other projects on which I may play someone more gregarious, and that may entail me being a lot more public uh, on the set because that that because I, because that helps, or I, or I like to. And then there may be things where it just doesn't operate at all. I mean, it's possible, I think. But you also you always need to keep the ember of the character kind of you know uh, glowing. It seems to me, and whatever whatever is required, you do this long enough, you learn to kind of modulate. You just have sort of an internal thing that tells you how much how 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 deep you need to be in at any one particular moment. Completely. Um, do you, how much are you enjoying, or how much do you want to put yourself in the fight sequences, and how much are you sort of like I have a stunt person and I'm going to let them help me? I want the sequence to come out the best that it possibly can. And uh, traditionally, that has certainly met me doing an awful lot of the stuff myself because there's you can't trade that, you know, that that's important stuff. But there are things that it really does pay to have uh, someone do for you for whatever reason. Usually it would have to do with a fall that, you know, it just requires technique that I know I may think that I have, and maybe I did have at one point, but maybe maybe I don't quite have it anymore, or is it really worth taking taking that risk, you know? Uh, and that's what these guys are for. There's always an aspect, not only do I play my role, I am also the steward of my role, the custodian of my role. And what does that mean? It means that I have to do everything I can to make sure that the role comes first, the character comes first, the character is played to the best that it can be played. And sometimes that requires the cooperation, the assistance, the intervention of other people, including stunt people. Before I run out of time with you, I am obviously a huge fan of James Cameron and Avatar. Uh, I love the way that he basically pushes technology forward in all of his movies in a way that no one sees coming. Can you sort of talk about what it's like collaborating with him on these upcoming films and maybe how how he's pushing technology again? Yeah, he's definitely pushing it big time on this one. And I'm not I'm not giving away any trade secrets to say that. But I remember working on a sequence <laughs> with him, which he which was had there was a scale, an issue of scale going on. OK, I'll, sure. that's all I'll say. And, <laughs> and it was defeating. It was just it sort of brought everything to kind of a halt. There was a problem that no one else recognized except him at the moment. And so he had to come up with a solution. Anyway, we basically shut down or started working on something else because he had, the next day he came to me kind of, you know, real excited and said, I figured out the algorithm to do this. And, and he, he stated this algorithm and I'm looking at him thinking, what the hell are you talking about? I have no idea even what you're talking about. But he did. He, 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 he created a problem because he, because he want, he, there was a problem because he wanted to see something to happen. And then he solved it. He's been doing that for his entire career. And it's really, it's pretty cool. Pretty amazing. If you don't mind me asking, and I don't want to get you in any trouble, but what was it like reading those scripts for the first time? What, what did you take away from, I don't know if you read all four at the same time or just one of them, but could you sort of talk about that? When I finished the last script, I, I was uh, weeping. I just thought it was so beautiful. 
yeah, the, the, the final script, because because he told he's he's telling a great, great story, an original story, a beautiful, beautiful story. And uh, um, I, I was just incredibly, um, you know, moved by it. And I hope and I trust and believe that audiences will be, too, because one of the things that he does really, really well is he takes he moves it from the page to the stage in a very, very way, in a way that that you is very literal. You know what I mean? You you really see it. What you what you what you read is what you get from him. I think you know, and more and more. In fact, so that's all I'd say. A year from now, we'll start to be talking about that at great length. For today, it's all it's about you know a, a show I love equally, which is Don't Breathe for sure. 100%. I will stop there and I'm just going to say congrats on this. And I cannot wait to talk to you again down the road for this other thing. <laughs> for sure.